Mr. Annie News got us a solo leveling cut content. What did the anime change from episode 8, the double dungeon reunion? Whoa. Evidence. Evidence of your resistance. Human error. What? Level. Am I. March 10th, 20. Whoa, did, did he just tease us? Did. Did he just tease us on March 10th? He's gonna release a fucking new video? Was that what this is? It's not rare for an animated- I- I think he did, right? I- I- I think he's straight up just- He just teased us, right? ...to break away and make changes right. to the material they're adapting, but what is rare are the occasions when it's done with quality and purpose. Solo leveling has somehow managed to do both, and it's these changes that reassure mm. me this series is getting- mm, yes, purpose. Yes, right? That lot of, lot of purpose in the Cha in scenes that were never part of the regular story, but they're introducing it to the anime to really make us hyped up, right? It's the drip marketing, right? If you play Genshin or Honkai Star Rail, you know what they do. They do drip marketing. They, they, they tease you with all these cool designs saying, oh, look at these new characters that are about to drop. So, you know, the, the show is like, listen, you do have Juhi right now, but look at Cha in man. The adaptation it deserves. Mm -hmm. yep. Like, there's very little detail put into the side characters in the manhwa and novel, but episode 8 just had half- Coward. Pussy. Traitor. Liar. Daddy, are you strong? <laughs> yeah, I'm- I'm strong, baby girl. <laughs> Definitely not gonna die. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Run time dedicated to them. Not only does this flesh out characters we weren't going to see until a whole lot later, but it also develops the story beyond Sung jin and his straightforward journey to become- <gasps> ay, ay. Yes, it was technically a means to pad the episode and pace things slower, but when it enriches mm. the story and provides actual value, I have zero problem with scenes that divert from the original like this. I heard that last episode really was very anime original, right? there, And, and it did feel like- Kind of like a filler episode in the sense that a lot of people just think that if there's nothing, if the plot isn't progressing and nothing really happened and you have anime only scenes, then it's kind of like a filler, right? But honestly, uh, it definitely wasn't the most exciting, obviously, like, you know, but the people that are super into the story, I feel like they would appreciate the anime original scenes that was shown in last episode. So just like how you did last time. Let me know in the comments what you would rate the episode. 69! A simple number between 1 and 10, and if you want, perhaps the reason why you think that. Last video, I was able to put together this, and I oh. think it'd be fun to continue doing it. Uh-oh, last episode's gonna get ranked like 6 or 7, dude. You know, just a little community... Yo, he even has a top comment thing? Opinions together. This is pretty cool. Mr. Annie News is really innovating and trying to get community engagement, right? So obviously, if you comment on a video, like the video, these are like signals. The YouTube algorithm sees that, oh, your audience is regularly engaging with your content. So obviously, have by saying, hey, type something, right? And then you're going to type some shit. Then it boosts the engagement, right? But at the same time, it's like building community sense. There's even top comments like this. This is really cool, man. I, I kind of think like, I don't know. It'd be fun if we could do some shit like this. Where like We have like a top comment to the last video or something. Together. But anyway... Episode 8. This is frustrating. Covering okay. chapters 27 to 28 of the manhwa and chapters 29 to 31 of the web novel. As you can tell by the chapter coverage alone, it's pretty clear not much progress was made with the main story. It was instead padded with scenes- Padded. Yes. Very padded. Scenes like these and extended- Yeah, scenes like these. Yeah. <laughs> including increased development of the side characters and world building. Part of this includes guilds and their influence in society, and it's this aspect that I believe is one of the most important to solo leveling. The I five guilds of Korea, the top guilds. Now, but if you want to learn more, then you should definitely watch this video. It's a detailed breakdown of what they do and how powerful they are. Again, Mr. Annie News, understanding that the YouTube algorithm loves it when you watch one video, then you click onto a different video, and it keeps the regular audience engaged into your channel. To smart, smart, smart. The very beginning, though, Episode Seven left us right at the end of the Cerberus fight. It was a hard-fought battle that rewarded him with four levels, three Cerberus molars, and a necklace. Okay. The molars were sold for 150,000 gold apiece. I just don't know how the currency conversion is between the gold and, like, the Korean one, because you can't seem to use gold outside these, like, instant dungeon shops, right? And the necklace provided a stat boost of 20 to both agility. Would you guys wear this necklace? Listen, the necklace is a nice way to say choker. You want to be Tenka's little slave? If Tenka gave you this necklace, would you wear it? I mean, I would probably wear it in an instant. I mean, you don't even need to give me the fucking stats, dude. The ant sense. 
This wasn't something Sung was sure would work for him, though, since he really didn't want to have to fight with some crazy-looking dog collar around his neck. <laughs> yeah, like... Luckily, the item disappeared once it was equipped, so... That oh, thank God. Keep it on all the time. Thank God. It was a solid item that left him with stats looking like this. Still, that wasn't nearly enough to handle the dungeon, so Sung would leave and go search for other methods to level up. Specifically, the 19 C-rank raids that Jinho offered. There's some cute chibi moments in the webtoon that I'm finding, huh? Look at this shit. You never see this in the anime. If you remember from last video, this was an offer Sung had accepted the first time Jinho came to him. He had realized he could kill two birds with one stone and decided to join Jinho under the condition the raids were done alone. Yeah. This way he would get rich, get stronger, and keep his powers secret, and Jinho in return would be the D-rank hunter who led 19 C-rank raids without a single casualty. That's kind of insane, huh? Dad is definitely going to be so impressed. Well... But what if dad realizes that, like, it's only one person that cleared it at all? Maybe that would be fine because dad was trying to poach Cha Hei in the last episode, right? He really wants, like, an S rank hunter on the guild, right? And Song Jimu probably isn't S rank level, but I'm sure he's gonna get there. It was a win win situation in which both parties got exactly what they wanted. So, this was something Jinho had been actively working on, and while he was close to putting a fake raiding team together, it still wasn't done, which meant Sung had to wait a bit. It was time he felt was being wasted since every moment was one he wanted to spend leveling. This led Sung to constantly check the hunter forums, but... Oh, see again? You see, you see at the very top here? It's kind of squished, so you can't see it, but this quest says C-Rank. To those who manipulate dem demons, right? I don't know, it says you can t like, control demons, and it's like demon? Demon castle? That too didn't have a single group looking for an E-Rank hunter. It had forced Sung to accept the fact he simply couldn't level up right now. A task he had been so incredibly engrossed by that he didn't even realize he'd been neglecting the chores lately. So, when he went to the fridge and saw that it was empty, this made him realize it was probably a good time to go and do grocery shopping. This what the? This feels like such slice of life shit happening. Okay, we're going grocery shopping. Shang Jin Wu goes grocery shopping. Setting for which he'd okay. reunite with Mr. Song. Oh, okay. Unlike That's how, how we see him. their way to the gate in the anime, in the novel this was more of a chance meeting guided by fate. I actually like Mr. Song a lot. I think that of all the people in the double dungeon, he's the most honorable. He even like tried to save Sung Jimu at the very end. Yes, he did leave with Juhi. It was an unfortunate, you know, circumstance, which I memed on him saying he probably felt so happy when he realized that Juhi couldn't walk, right? Because that means he can go out with Juhi. But, but, despite all that, I think he's super legit. He's very humble. He's very respectful. He's the one that apologized, but the other people couldn't. They can't even make eye contact with Sung Jimu right now. I mean, Mr. Song definitely would have visited Sung had he been able to get a hold of him, but because the association kept the double dungeon- Yeah, the spiky purple hair dude, right? So we did see him earlier on. He was like, oh, Sung Jin Woo, hold the fuck up. You changed a lot. So next episode, it's going to be very interesting trying to, like, get under his radar, right? We can't be too sus, but we can't carry too hard. The incident private, neither him nor Juhi had any way of contacting him. They couldn't even call his cell phone because the replacement for the one he lost in the double dungeon still hadn't been given to him yet. <laughs> this was the primary method the That's association so silly. contacted its hunters with, and it was only through that or the house phone that Sung would find out about association raids. So, unless he was home to monitor every call 24-7, there was a chance he could miss some raids since that was his only method of hearing about them. In fact, he had actually missed one that happened just a week ago. The association had called him while he was out with Huang's group, and it was that particular gate that Juhi had gone to. As it turns out, despite saying how she was going to retire, Juhi still showed up to association raids in hopes of one day seeing Sung there. She was willing to overcome her fear just so she could see him again. But like, you know, she's... She's not gonna win. Where are we going with Juhi? I, I think a good redemption for her, right, is to get over her PTSD, her trauma. She's finally going out, right? She's going to be able to open up more. I don't, I don't think... I, I think it ends there. I think her character development ends there as she gets inspired by Sung Jin Moo and like, is able to move forward, but I don't think there's going to be anything romantic. No, I think that's all safe for Cha Hae-in, man. No shot, Juhi yeah, gets there. Mr. Song and Sung would continue to talk, but with prying eyes constantly glancing towards their direction, the two decided to move somewhere a bit more private. Funnily enough, just the act of walking was enough for Mr. Song to sense that something was different about <laughs> Just the se just walking? What do you mean? Just look at him. He's like a foot taller. He looks completely different. Everyone's saying, well, actually, if you look at his facial structure, it's not too different. Shut the fuck up. It's not just a haircut. He's an entirely different human being. 
His steps were light and presence minimized, so much so that despite Sung standing right next to him, Mr. Song had a hard time detecting that Sung It was impressed him? There. Okay. He felt that if the two were to fight at this very moment, nothing he, would lose. he could do would come even close to touching Sung. It was an absurd feeling since he was a C rank and Sung just an E rank. I wonder what he's at right now. A lot of people are saying at this current time, um, Song Jimu is kind of like C rank right now. That thought quickly passed through Mr. Song's mind, though, since what he really wanted to do right now was simply thank Song. He was truly appreciative of Song having saved him, and every Giga word Chad. of gratitude was spoken with the utmost sincerity. Song never expected for such a spectacle to happen, but when it did, he surprisingly didn't feel bad about it. In fact, he had actually felt a little bit of pride. He was satisfied that his heroic actions were finally being acknowledged by someone. Okay. It was when Sung would tell Mr. Song to raise his head that that's when Mr. Song would receive a call on his hunter cell phone. He would step aside and try to take it privately away from Sung, but every word was more than audible due to Sung's enhanced sense stat. So, though Mr. Song was trying to protect Sung from yet another dangerous raid, a D rank gate wasn't an opportunity Sung was going to skip out on. Besides, if Mr. Song was getting a call from the association, then that meant he definitely should have been too. He just wasn't home to answer the call again. It was common knowledge the association called all its nearby hunters when a raid was happening, so as soon as Mr. Song realized Sung had heard everything, he had no right to deny Sung from going anymore. He was just as entitled to the raid as everyone else was. So Mr. Song didn't want him to go to protect him, I guess, because he doesn't know how strong he is. But Mr. Like Song Jin was probably gonna save everybody, right? He's probably gonna be super flex, gonna save everybody in the dungeon because the convicts are there. The convict. I wonder who the real enemies are. The convicts or like the enemy boss. But the the, the purple and spiky hair dude should keep everyone online. But without a doubt, Song Jin will probably do something really cool against the convicts, and maybe purple spiky guy will kind of notice it. Plus, had Sung missed out on the association's call one more time, then he would have lost his hunter license permanently. What? Because you're on call- what? You ignore these calls and you fucking lose the entire license? That's bullshit! The reason being that to ignore the association three times would result in expulsion. What? The penalty Sung had risked facing more times than once before. Back when he still received major injuries from raiding, he would always shut his phone off after in fear of going to the next one. And he almost got expelled? Because he couldn't afford to lose his license though, he would always relent and end up accepting the phone call anyway. Following through with the raid despite not being physically or mentally prepared. Now, even though this gate was right in the middle of a residential area, not a single civilian was spectating due to the fear of what could potentially appear from it. What I mean is that, more times than not, a gate done by the association was one on the verge of a dungeon break. It was really? one that's been open for almost a week and as such was at the top of the list for needing closing. Had the gate been one that only just recently opened, then a crowd definitely would have formed around it to take a look at it. Since this was one where monsters could appear from it any second though, every civilian was far and away just in case that did happen. Part of me wants a gate break to happen because all these civilians are such cocky like entitled bitches dude. Where's my taxpayer money going bro? Where the fucking hunter is that? I, I don't know. If I was a hunter and I heard that shit, I'd be like fuck them. Let the monsters take them out. It made the police's job a whole lot easier since- What the fuck is the police gonna do straight up with these guns? Is, is the guns gonna affect something? Like the police probably can't do shit against the monsters. Cordoning off the area was a simple matter of creating a border around it. If you're wondering why prisoners were needed to assist with this gate, the simple answer was that too many hunters had died recently. Huh. You see, with the double dungeon incident leaving Eleven dead, there simply weren't enough local association hunters left to form a full raiding party anymore. That's how few we are? I thought there was a shitload of like low level hunters like that, but I guess the double dungeon impact is that big? Especially not one that could handle a D rank dungeon. Luckily, a B rank hunter surveillance member would be there to join them too, but Purple something guy. about that group as a whole just seemed off to some. There was a strange killing intent that could be sensed coming from the direction of Kang and the prisoners. Sung wasn't sure who it was or where exactly it was coming from, but the impeding aura was definitely enough to make him suggest Juhi avoid this raid. Hmm. He knew immediately something was off about all this. I swear to god, if they do some weird shit with Juhi in the fucking dungeon and the convicts try to like gang up on her, oh my god, please don't. Now, there was a moment when Mr. Kim had tried to talk to Sung, but Fuck both of these dudes, dude. Can't even make a fucking eye contact, dude. Shame. Have you no shame? As soon as he caught wind of Sung's frigid glare, any attempt to do so was immediately averted. Ooh, quick side the eye. The received had covered him with goosebumps and filled him with chills. 
one side eye from Sung Jin Woo and Mr. Kim and the other guy can't even look at it. They got goosebumps now. It wasn't Kim's fault for wanting to avoid Sung after <laughs> this because the feeling he Beta. Beta. The beta submits in body language. Can't even look to the alpha giga chat Sung Jin Woo. I honestly don't remember who the guy on the right is. I, I straight up don't remember who he is. Got was completely intentional. You see, Sung had applied a light bit of killing intent into his gaze, and that alone was enough for Kim to well, realize did? Sung didn't want to be talked to. That, that's kind of fucked up. It's just, I mean, not really, but it's like killing intent on Mr. Kim. I was like, hey! It had left him filled with regret and a face. Nah, he deserves this shit. Nah, he deserves this shit. Nah, 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 fuck him, fuck him, fuck him. He deserves the shit. Like this. It's here in the manhwa the circumstance of Sung meeting Juhi is different too, because unlike the anime, this was the first time Juhi had seen him since the incident. She'd been looking for him ever since it happened, but as I said before, she had no means of actually getting to him. This made their reunion a whole lot more emotional. Damn, she was crying? Happened. She was crying at the fucking webtoon? What the fuck? It's like cherry blossoms too. Like, no girl, you're not gonna win him. It's already over. Regret both her and Song feel for abandoning him. Now, I'm gonna rewind here and go back to this scene with Mr. Song because it's in the mon where the person he's training with is actually an S rank hunter. What? We don't ever get to see their face, but is I it think S rank it's hunter? To know since it really emphasizes the fact Mr. Song is an extremely skilled swordsman. Holy shit. Like, if one of the strongest hunters is willing to be trained by him, then that alone should be enough to dictate how adept he is. Random fucking S rank hunter just chilling in Mr. Song's dun like dojo? And how many S rank hunters are there again in Korea? Like. I forget, it's like seven or some shit. Maybe there was like nine. I don't know. There's like, there, it's not more than 10. And one of them is just in his dojo like this, but in the anime, it wasn't him. So maybe it's not nine of them. Okay, so interesting. I, I, the anime left him out though. So I guess he wasn't that important. Unfortunately, none of that's useful in a dungeon since without that enhanced strength All to right. physically fight magical beasts, him swinging a sword would do literally nothing to them. It was a phenomenon that left him wondering why. Why would he, a master swordsman, I don't know why, but the, the, the girl on the right, she looks very annoyed at the blonde guy trying to get her number, and she's like, ugh, look how disgusted she looks. He awakened as a mage-type hunter. He'd contemplated the question time and time again, but despite no answer ever being found, he always believed that there was one. Perhaps there was a- I, if, he, if he's, you know, a good swordsman, but he awakened as a ma mage-type, can't he be like a magic swordsman? Reason why he awakened like this. Like, fucking Perhaps shoot beams out of your fate, sword! Just like how reuniting with all the survivors was fate. This was pretty much what we saw him contemplating in the anime, but I think it's important to emphasize he's so skilled that even S-Ranks want to train with him. Cool. Mr. Now, Song Hype. that's all the cut content from the manhwa and novel, but I think I'll take a moment to briefly talk about the extra scenes. Mm. This one yes, was yes. The ex what are you going to talk about the extra scene here, huh? Give us a breakdown, analysis, detail. Rahayin was mostly fan service, but yeah. it just highlight the steps Jinho's father is already taking to begin the formation. Yeah, I, I guess the whole point of that was to show Jinho's dad trying to poach S-Rank Hunters, right? But there was a big scene where she was just drinking water. Very slowly. Very loudly. Of his own guild. The scene in the car was purely exposition, but it does well to summarize the purpose of guilds and how important they are. Once again, if you want to know more, you can always watch this video where I go in depth on it. We've already seen it! Mr. Kim's scene highlighted why it is he still goes on raids, and Juhi's further displayed the type of trauma she's dealing with. She definitely doesn't like going on raids, but with an ability to heal placing her up there at the B rank, she feels a moral responsibility to continue doing so. Combine this with the fact Sung continues to train despite being an E-rank, and it's that image which has her pushing forward too. So I just think that this character's character development will end after this dungeon. As in like, she'll be able to move forward with her trauma after being inspired by Sung Jin Woo. And that's that. I just don't see her coming back. Maybe she will. Maybe, maybe, do you think that the, the animation studios will like cuck Juhi? You know, like, Cha Hyun and Song Jin Woo hasn't met yet, but I think everybody realizes, like, that's probably gonna be the shit. So do you think Juhi will, like, witness that scene and get cucked? Do you think the anime would do that? <laughs> would she die? What the fuck? You want Juhi to die?! The scene with Bak and Choi is actually quite interesting, because while on the surface it is just a little argument, Choi's comments on the interview gives us an idea. Little thing. I know, it's, it's very... It's really unfair, right? The fucking letters for this guy's name is Guildmaster C-H-O-I. Anybody would read that as Choi. But unfortunately, for whatever fucking reason, the pronunciation, pronunciation is actually Che. It's better to kind of understand it as like a C-H. 
U E. I don't even know how you would do that. C H E A. A ch. It's not choi. It's ch in Korean. I don't know. The, the, the Korean to English pronunciation, the translation in English, it, it never works out nicely. Of who they really are, as the one who doesn't identify as a talented hunter of great character dedicated to the job. You can see Choi is the sly guildmaster focused more on the business and growth aspect. Where yes, he's so sly that he named his fucking guild the Hunter's Guild, which is so cocky because that pretty much says that we are the only guild for hunters. But he did have like a huge uh, moment when thinking about the Anthrate, right? The Jeju Island stuff. And he's like, damn, he, he actually has like a moral obligation. He seems like an actually good person. Whereas Beck is more the guildmaster using his position for noble purposes. The rest builds on Jeju and the failed raid from years ago, yeah. which in my opinion They're really hyping this up. teased rather nicely so far. So all in all, these scenes were completely valid. They may not come straight from the manhwa or focus on Sung getting stronger, but they do build on the overall story in general. And for me, any addition of world building is always a welcome one. Me too. Now, that may not be what you think, so once again, let me know- Y'all know what to do! Please go give Mr. Any News. Go like his video, man. Go sub to his channel if you haven't. He always gives such good breakdowns of what happened. And and as people said, right, a lot of people were probably kind of not too happy that we had like a, a fucking recap episode and then like a kind of like a quote unquote filler. But I think that if you're a true fan of the show, that you should be able to kind of like digest this and it'll kind of enhance the experience moving forward, right? More information is always good. So I'm sure the next episodes are going to be peak and I'll be there for that.